it by like a millisecond but that's okay i'm okay with that i love to get that transition just right right when it ends and i get everything 
that says this is going to be a great show. I was close enough to say this is probably going to be a mess show. No, no, it's going to be an awesome show. This is going to be the best show because this is a Friday show. Friday show. Actually, Friday shows, I would say generally, if we're being honest, Friday shows are probably and generally going to be the least likely to be a really good show. But one never knows. Usually by the end of the week, my brain is a little bit taxed. I only have so much. That's one of the reasons why I changed the formats to the way that I do it so that Monday's show is a lot less intense preparation work a little bit more casual approach to Monday a lot less writing and thinking before the show so uh, yeah. Friday Friday is like okay man I got one more day of, of I could do this but I do generally I will write a poem every day nonetheless so yeah it's been a challenge but at the same hand, even though it's been a challenge and certainly parts of it definitely feel like work, all in all, I'm enjoying doing it. So I'm not, I'm, this is not me complaining. I'm just, especially during Coronavilles, I think after Coronavilles, you'll see a lot less of this. <clears throat> you'll see some behind the scenes kind of commentary stuff. Uh, but in general, you'll see a lot less of this kind of stuff. But for now, for Coronavilles, I think it's interesting for me to document the transitioning, I th as I said in the very beginning when I started doing this series, whatever this ends up being, Frico Talks News, this is gonna, it is heading towards being the greatest podcast of all time in terms of its actual quality. Subjectively speaking, of course, but objectively, of course, too, if I can convince enough of you that with the confidence of my voice that it's true, then it'll be true. <coughs> and then <coughs> first I become greatest and then I'm recognized as greatest. And I decided that I was going to be realistic. And I, I have a 12-week plan. And I'm in... This is the end of week six for that plan. And by the way, speaking of six, we're only going to do two sixes. We're not going to freak anybody out. Just two sixes. <laughs> Just two sixes, everyone. <laughs> no, 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 no. The next number is three or... No, no. No, I'm going to say the next number is 479. There you go. Okay, <clears throat> I have no idea. I just whatever. So the second six of only two sixes is six shows. Six shows since Frico last freak out. That's me, Frico. So we are going for seven shows today. Seven shows. I know. I know. what. What does that mean? We're in second place. It just means we're more in second place than we were. But it means. That we're closer to 21 shows. 21 shows, ladies and gentlemen. I did 21 shows without having a single freak out. Now, today is going to be a bit of a challenge, especially because it's Friday. And Although, fortunately, health-wise, I am in generally speaking, I have a migraine, weird, one of my weird migraine things. But I, it's pretty low-key, pretty low-intensity, so... It's only affecting me somewhat. It it really affects your ability to recall things a lot. When you have these migraines, you're like, "What? Um, what's the name of that band that sang that song?" That's what you, <laughs> that's what you end up saying to people a lot during one of those migraines. And it is one of those migraines, but it's a lot <clears throat> lower intense. So, so I don't know. I like my chances of getting through this show. I think that I have a pretty good ch chance of uh, making it to seven. But uh, there's going to be some road bumps on the way. And speaking of which, uh, just a, just ahead of time, just because there are things that might actually agitate me. And there are things that don't even agitate me that I just express in ways that agitate others. With that in mind, listen, all of you, I love you very much. That's why I do what I do, of course. Of course, that's what I do what I do. Of course, I'm totally self-sacrificing and all that noble stuff. I'm a noble person. Remember that. So, uh, because of that, I just, I just with love, with love, I say this to you. Warning, the theory we're about to expose you is part of the mind of individuals who are limited in their capacity to understand the actual reality of power around them, just as you and everyone else in life currently are. What you're about to hear are opinions, suppositions, like gospel, or scientific proofs, not infallible certainties. Brace yourself for incoming opinions that could confirm or deny your preferential view of the reality of power. 
Brace yourself for fallible material, fallible opinions, and values reflected, but nonetheless variable from the hell. We do not apologize to anyone in our band. We do not apologize for daring to express our views and questions about what we believe in this and what we hope to see. We will keep talking so long as we are able. And now, Frico attempts to talk about the news without freaking out. Hey, that's the plan, ladies and gentlemen. I intend to talk to you, well, with, without freaking out. That's the plan. That is always the plan. We are six shows in a row, counting yesterday's show, and we're already well into this show, and I don't even feel upset about anything. I'm happy right now. I'm in a good mood. All is well. My wife is working from home today, so as she is wont to do because of her undying love for me and my undying love for her, the mutuality is so intense that she brought me down some 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 coffees for the show. And so that's what we're dealing with today, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a sponsor. This cup, though, this cup says sister is a sister is a gift to the heart. Now, I want to let you know. As far as the exterior appearance of the cup, I am completely indifferent to it. I seek to block it out in as much as I possibly can when I use this cup. However, this cup is so tactilely pleasing. It's got a, a heaviness. Uh, there's a, a line by W.B. Yeats, I think. I think it was him. He says he was talking about poetry and, and the difference between a poetic expression and a prosaic expression, if you will. Although the, the ultimate goal of a poet is to 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 use the prosaic and yet present it in a way that it becomes well. Anyway, never mind. Uh, the prosaic way of saying it is: you have a cup, you have you have you have a, you have a heavy coffee cup that, uh, or you have a light coffee cup. But uh, instead of saying you have a, a light coffee cup, he would say, or a heavy coffee cup, he would describe it as a heavy spillable cup. Just that little, just little bit of a I interjection of a, of a phrase in a, of that word in a way that... Anyway, when I think of that heavy spillable cup, I think of a cup that feels like this. And the other thing I love about this, if this was all white, I would prefer it if this was all white. So in general, I really do like the white. I, And this part is fine. The whole sister thing is, you know, I'm not a sister. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I, I feel like, uh, I feel like when I hold this, I, do I have a sister within me? If I did, I think she's probably going to police right now. <laughs> the let me out. The heck, this is this is dank in here. The dankness is too dank for me. Get me the heck out. She's calling the cops right now. Yeah, it's like Kimmy Schimmel or Schmidt or whatever her name is. The, you know, I'm talking about that. Da, 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 da. Never mind. It's a uh, Kimmy 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 Schimmel or. Oh man, this is see this is now with this migraine I'm able to get the Kimmy but I can't get the exact <laughs> Yeah, there you go. There you go. Anyway, the it's a, I think it was a Netflix show. I think it's still on. Uh, I watched the first two seasons. Now the second season was not to me as good as the first. However, I really enjoyed it. I can't remember any of the character names right now other than Kimmy and uh I can't remember the name of her roommate and he's awesome oh man oh that's terrible but then carol kane is in it as the uh she's awesome in it it's just a great great ensemble cast funny funny show <clears throat> but i never really did I, I never watched the third season i think in part because the second season i was like eh, i i could see where that was going and i was getting a little bit i uh, know i do re highly recommend the second season it's really really cool really great but I was thinking where this was going. I probably wasn't as interested in, in the dynamic of their situations anymore. She was going to have to get a little. What really made her interesting was the whole rawness of her. But uh, I just couldn't see them sustaining the rawness of this. Of this, what, what am I doing? What does any of this matter to you? <laughs> Why am I doing this? Stop it. Anyway, whatever her name is, Kimmy Schmidt, Kimmy Schimmel, whatever. Hey. If you go to Frigo.com, you get Turco Marine Diversion, the beachhead gain. We all need the, well, you know what? 
I'm not going to talk about these. I got to think about how I'm going to do this. Oh, here we go. Hugh, Hugh Mouse scuttles into the evolutionary what the freak jungle. The increasing cost of the one man corpo band. Well, you know what? We'll just we'll just wait. We'll just wait for this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're going to get the Freako talks the news here. Which is the human X factor in killing. This is Freako Talks and News, Friday, May 15th, 2020. Paying those you paid to watch horror. The Gopher State gets a big grid battery, 3D printed concrete wind power in the deep blue sea. We all need the human touch, and so will our future battles. Turtle Marine Diversion, the beachhead game. You know what? I, that deserved to be. This That is actually the Turtle Marine Diversion is the news poem. I should have put this up here it should be up here so i i did some things and i i definitely okay i i i know what happened here never mind we don't have to talk about it we're gonna move on we're gonna get ready for the headlines how about that you know this is too small let's see how big we can get this without incorporating oh wow we got this up in here yeah we go there we go that's better that's like it See, that's Walter Walt Hansen. And there's Walter Walt there, right there, right there, right there. Let me take a sip of this coffee that my wife uh, heated up for me. This is the res residuals from the early morning sojourning. Now, in an ideal circumstance, I wake up at 4 in the morning and I have coffee and I enjoy about two hours to well, take in data whatever data I choose and then uh, and then about 6 a.m. that's when I start my new sorting and stuff and, but today I didn't get up till 5 and then I had to drive somewhere at 7 a.m. so I didn't quite have that wonderful morning time that I'm accustomed to I didn't take in as much data in the morning didn't even do my Bible Bible stuff today uh, I know it's terrible, yeah, because that's when I, I do that usually first in the morning. I listen to audibles of the Bible. Oh, well, no, it's not an audible. That's true. Well, it is. It's an audio. It's on uh, Bible app. Uh, what the heck's the name of the? Is it just called the Bible app? Is it what it's called? Uh, no, wait, hold on. I'll tell you what it is. I feel like you know what? I know. I know. I know. I got this. I got this. Oh, yeah, it's just called the Bible app. Oh, it just says Bible. Bible app, I guess. Whatever. You version. Okay, yeah, that was the name I was thinking about. But that's it. That's it. I didn't even do that this morning because I woke up late. Yes, four in the morning is when I usually wake up. I usually go to bed somewhere between nine and midnight. And I get up usually between four and five a.m. And that's my life. And I love it. That's like I, I found it at my uh, advanced stage. Such as that is. It seems to be the best uh, harmonized period for me. Dude, you said period. <laughs> you totally said period. What? What does that even mean? You're a child. All right, let's record the uh, first segment here. In three, two, one. Here's the talk headlines for Frico Talks the News on Friday, May 16th. No. Not May 16th. Is it May 16th? I'm so confused. No, it's May 15th. That's right. Friday, May 15th, 2020. I am Frigo with Frigo.com. And this is our top headline. Paying those you paid to watch horror. And before we get to that, I just want to draw something to your attention real quick. And that is... Some of the places that we get the stories that lead up to the section of the story we're going to cover today is from newsalight.com. The glitz, the odd, the under the radar, the hard to believe news at a glance. If you go there today, you get some of these links. Our number crunching epidemiologist handing out good medicine advice. Seeing the universe through new lenses. Arrest warrants issued for Giants DeAndre Baker and Seahawks Quinton Dunbar following alleged armed robbery. Ultra long working distance spectroscopy, spectroscopy with 3D printed aspherical micro lenses. Those are just some of the Steve stories there on newsalike.com. Let's get back to our story. Paying those you paid to watch horror. 
Aaron Elder Facebook Settlement. The taking in of truly horrifying videos and posts on the social medias can, at times, be trying for anyone. And we've all experienced unfortunate exposures to videos and images we'd rather unsee. I certainly have come across some things in my Facebook feed through the years that I would not have chosen to see. Images that to this day still fundamentally bother me to my core. Now, take my experience and multiply it a million times a day, metaphorically speaking, and get paid to watch the pain. That's what social media moderators do every day. And the Facebook version just got a settlement that could raise the cost of watching pain for all the other social media platforms out there as well. And maybe, maybe that's just as well. Now, before we get to read the excerpt here, we have a question before us, which is this. We have quantum safe cryptography. Do we want to keep this or remove this. I say, and since I speak for everyone, and magnanimously and benevolently, of course, I say we keep it, but we change it. Because now we need, a, we need a different iteration for this right now. Yeah. We need to see if we can... Is there a way to twist? No, we can't do that. We're just going to have to make this a little smaller. We're just going to have to bring you down here. And then we're going to... You know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to darken that background to the... J just just do that. Yeah, let's just make it that. Let's just... There you go. Uh, there we go. There we go. Let's just do that. Let's just... Let's just leave it like that. That's... I think that... For some reason, I feel like this is fitting and I can't exactly say why. And it could just be a, a heuristic institutional satisfaction, which is bearing no relevance to the rest of humanity. Or it could be something that a lot of you are feeling as you look at this. And why, as I go along, why this might just float above here. This is like a shield. This is a shield here. This is what I'm trying to come across here, okay? There you go. Artist never shows his work. Well... You do when it's news art. Sometimes you do. You do all kinds of things when it's news art. You don't care. Facebook settles. This is from the Washington Post. Facebook settles class action suit for $52 million with content moderators. Aaron Elder was assigned to the child abuse review team working as a content moderator at Facebook when she realized she needed help. Imagine just... I, I say I'm not even going to repeat the things that I've seen as a non-moderator that came across... Because of maybe I was in groups and, you know, there was periods of time. I don't do Facebook anymore, but uh, there was periods of time when people could join you to groups without your consent. So you'd find yourself in groups and then you didn't know you were in groups until something came across your feed. It was like, what the heck is, how am I seeing this? And then you realize, you know, you know what I'm talking about. The horrors. So I can't imagine what these folks have seen. So. She appealed to her manager to see a counselor to help cope after reviewing a disturbing post, footage of a teenage girl being raped by a group of men in the middle of a field with tall grass. The manager did not have an answer, she said. About a week later, she told her there was a counselor available for her to talk to once a quarter. Once a quarter. Once a quarter. It was very clear that we needed more, much more support than we were receiving, Elder said. That experience led her to join a lawsuit the following year charging that Facebook... Uh, I won't read this part. I'll just say I'll get, get down to here. The case resulted in a first-of-its-kind settlement this week. Facebook agreed to pay $52 million to thousands of U.S. workers who have suffered the psychological consequences of reviewing posts depicting acts of suicide, murder, child abuse, and other disturbing content. And, and I... Fortunately, I've never seen one. Well, never mind. I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to. Now, 
Now we're going to the increasing cost of the one-man corpo band. You know what? I'm going to leave this right here. I think I'm going to leave this right here. I think this is still appropriate. You're hanging on quantum safe cryptography. The increasing cost of the one-man corpo band. And dude, no offense, dude. I, I, you know, you're probably not a corpo dude, so nothing. You're just a visual metaphor, but uh, you're 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 only a visual metaphor in the in the very uh, very 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 direct sense. You're, you're not. It is a human being that does what you do. You're not a metaphor in and of itself. It's just the visual representation of all of that stuff coming out your back and stuff and stuff. All right. Let's do this one. The increasing cost of the one-man corpo band. Some one-man bands are entertaining and some are just noise, but some one-man bands will eat you out of house and home, assuring they continue to enjoy the massively high-quality lifestyle they continue to enjoy. Yes, I intentionally used enjoy twice. I wanted to emphasize enjoy. Enjoy. Coronavills has punched some of this stuff in the face, but on the main, Coronavills has laid bare the stark contrast and circumstance between those who CEO our lives and those who don't. I don't understand Coronavills is right then, because cause more of uh, black folk are getting in down of Coronavills. It's because more black folk is stuck be behind enemy lines like those are brothers and sisters stuck behind enemy lines the vast numbers of uh i don't know the percentage of of the black community such as that is as a whole it's basically the aggregate of human beings that are black that are citizens of america for the most part that's the community that's what you're really talking about i don't know what percentage of those uh live in these uh inner city hells but uh i just more and more in my life as i've gotten older and older even as a young man i was i was interested in jack kemp in 1996 it was my first republican that i ever liked and i still i remained a democrat until year 2000 so i didn't switch to Repu well i did register for republican in 96 but only to vote for jack kemp in the primaries but bob dole Bob Dole, and then he became his running mate, so I still didn't vote for Bob Dole, by the way, in 96, because Bob Dole. But Jack Kemp wanted to basically shock and awe these communities out of, of that hell to free the human beings behind enemy lines. And he didn't use those lines, but I'm using those lines. These are our brothers and sisters, our fellow Americans that are behind enemy lines that are trapped in these, these hells. These, there, there's so many ways that these bodies that enter into this life are immediately deprived of what they need to fully become what they are. They're no fault of their own, but they, they were born in the circumstance. And we have to end them. We have to stop them. They're, 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 they're nightmares. And it's... We should tolerate them no more. I don't know why I'm going on that, that ran. I think I was trying to make a different point and I got a little sidetracked. But that's what you do. That's what happens on Preco Talks the News. But oh, I was talking about the coronavirus. Uh, why? Why? Oh, why? Why more black people are getting it? And why more black people are dying? It's because in in disproportionate number of folks from this particular community the aggregate of people that are black that are americans on the most part uh that community is disproportionately behind enemy lines and there are white people behind enemy lines too there are mexicans there are all kinds of human beings behind enemy lines so to speak these these perpetuations of poverty that immediately grind human bodies down because human bodies even if they're all getting quote unquote food you know are nobody starving in america you know i'm having a lot more health issues right now during coronavirus because some of our stock ups a lot of what we're eating is processed stuff it's one of my thoughts is after coronavirus we're working on we have to have a, a healthier storehouse because it's doing stuff to me. 
this is what communities in in these ghettos get they get processed food garbage and so their bodies are immediately suffering deficiencies let alone the stresses of the of the unstable and 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 significantly less secure circumstances that they find themselves in daily these are these are war zones these are war zones and only the most incredible or the most fortunate and you have to have incredible amounts of high levels of intelligence coupled with high levels of discipline high levels of intelligence in and of itself is not going to get you out of these war zones or you have to have some incredible physical or musical some gift you have to be a good football player a good singer you, you you could you, if you have an excellent business acumen you're 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 less likely to succeed than if you have a high physical acumen you, if you have a a higher business acumen whatever that is you still have significant hurdles to overcome before you ever get to the point where you begin to understand that you have that high business acumen, you most likely you you won't even get to the point in in the in the in, to have a space in your life where you can discover that. So, why does Coronavirus kill more black people? Because more black people are behind enemy lines. That's why. That's that simple. It's not racism, although racism is why they're behind enemy lines, and the racism is is. Well, let's just say it's 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 both left and right that are still participating in this systemic racism. But uh, I'll get into that in other shows, and I've already gotten to some degree into that. But I got more to say about that as a you know, Frico talks the news until they until they turn off the signal. I keep talking like this; it ain't gonna be long, but I'm doing it. I don't care. I'm doing it. All right, here we are. Uh, Excerpt from Bloomberg.com. CEO pay up 940% paces its coronavirus reckoning. Bloomberg. The figures are stark. Inflation adjusted pay for chief executives at the largest U.S. US companies climbed 940% between 1978 and 2018, the Economic Policy Institute found, using the more conservative of the two methodologies in or whatever. This is... This is it. Remember, this is inflation adjusted. Okay, this is inflation adjusted. This is. Oh, by the way, quantum safe cryptography for this story is still going to survive because it's still this quantum safe cryptography is what kills their ability to do this, to continue to do things like this. Don't tell me there 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 is no human. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say this to you. Unless if you produce a digital product that somehow everybody sends you massive amounts of money, you just did it by yourself and you're making a bazillion dollars a year. I don't really think anybody's worth a bazillion dollars a year. I'm not for laws at all that 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 put any kind of artificial caps. I mean, ideally, I would like to see the e emergent natural caps that we find in general well it's really difficult for anyone to accrue wealth beyond a certain point because of the reality of power not because of the reality of laws and regulations but that's another story but anyway the the, the this this is inflation adjusted inflation adjusted so this 940 percent that 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 we live in a system in which these human beings they didn't produce a digital product that didn't require a whole bunch of inputs and moving parts and whatnot. They, they literally just tell people, for the most part, what to do. They literally have meetings with people and tell people what to do. And for that, it is viewed that their input into that universe is worth millions upon millions of dollars. And even during downtimes, even when when they get bailed out, they still pay their CEOs, their bonuses and all that. They still end up uh, there's there's now there's allegedly they're going to stop it. But I, listen, the CEOs will get their 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 pounds of flesh because we have a system that 
Well, fundamentally says it's okay. But there is a reckoning. I'm telling you there's a reckoning. And this is, this is the left's. This is the truth that the left benefit from. It benefits from. It's harder and harder for the right to deny this truth. It's just, just far and far more difficult for them to keep keep defending this. This is definitely how the left gets people to say, hey, oh wait, that law will might end up getting my neighbor killed. Well, you know, my neighbor probably my neighbor supports the Republicans, so that means that they're evil because. Look at this. They're telling me how... I mean, this is obvious. Anybody that looks at the I look at this, I'm like, how could you people be for continuing to protect these CEOs from whatever it is that's enabling them to do this? How, how are you for protecting them? And now then the left solutions are, we'll write more laws, we'll add more layers of bureaucracy, we'll give the government the central power, the ultimate monopoly in the land, the monopoly that makes all the other monopolies possible, will give them even more control over our lives more broadly than anything that we tell you initially. If we tell you we want one t if we tell you we want one inch of your life, we're taking a foot. At least minimal taking a foot. I know give them an inch will take a mile. I was being nice. I said foot. I didn't go to mile. Didn't I wasn't that hyperbolic. I'm a little hyperbolic, but not that. Alright. So I'm not going to read the rest of this. I just wanted you to make note of that. That's more of one of those things in passing. Let's see. Hugh Mal scuttles into the evolutionary what the freak jungle. I'm sorry. You're going no. Didn't survive. We'll see what happens next week. Because we've got Hugh Mal's. Hugh Mal's. You know what? I think we've already... You know what? It's it's weird. It, just as I put it down, like I find something worthy. Something worthy. Okay. We're going to make you... We're going to make you... We're going to make you blue. going to make you blue. I'm going to make the background here. Got the background going on. We're going to make the background white. We're going to do a little... Uh, let's say... Do a little space, do a little of this, this, do a little this, this, do a little this. Yeah, yeah, I think that uh, that's where we're at. And then we put you up right there. And we just, uh, we just put you at the corner down here. There we go. Nice and nice, nice. There we go. I think that, uh, I think that's justified, ladies and gentlemen, and days. I think you will all agree with this. Hugh Mal scuttles into the evolutionary what the freak jungle. Hugh Mouse is here. Well, an embryo missing human and mouse is here. And hey, that's just a hop, skip, and a jump from Men Better Pig coming into being for the reals. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm, yes. And I, for one, welcome. Welcome our Men Better Pig overlords. Even if they're just few mouses for now. This is an excerpt, an excerpt from sciencenews.org. I don't know why I choose my accent when I do. I just do them. You love them. You love them. I get lots of fan mails. I get no fan mails. Excerpt from sciencenews.org. New hybrid embryos are the most thorough mixing of humans and mice yet. Scientists have made embryos that are a lot mouse and a little bit human. With a little help, human stem cells can knit themselves into growing mouse embryos, populating the developing liver, heart, retina, and blood, researchers report. In May 13th edition of Science Advances, finicky human cells don't tend to grow well in other animals, but in one of the new mouse embryos, 4% of its cells were human. The most thorough mixing between human and mouse yet. Yay! Uh, wait, yay? That level of integration is quite striking to me, says Juan Castro. It's it, it's Bisua. It's Bisua. It's Bisua. Oh, my. I don't really care about your last name. Screw that. But listen, this. You didn't even make it, Hugh Mouse, out of your own story. That's sad. That is really sad. Uh, hold on. 
We got to do this up. I think that's good. It's Pitsua. It's Pitsua. It's Pitsua. It's Pitsua. Listen, it's Pitsua. I am definitely going to be... In well, I won't say definitely, but I will make note of that name because that could be one of the characters that emerges from Paul Gordon Collier's head. Like Frico and all the rest. I can definitely see an It's Pitsua in, 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 in the PGC future. And I, Frico, if such a thing occurs, I approve. I approve the emergence of its Basua within the PGC conglomerate. If other scientists can replicate the fi findings, it potentially represents a major advance, says its Basua Belmonte, who was not involved in the study. I don't care if you were. Your name sells it for me. If I see the person's name, it's Basua, that's instant credibility to me. I love that name. I don't know your personage, but I I would say that your name, it's Pasua, is 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 almost perfection. I think you all agree with that. That's that's probably going to last for a bit because that could have a lot of broad stuff. So it's Pasua. You could see your name with a lot of of uh, stuff in there. Who knows? Who knows? We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So this has been the uh, headlines feature. Thank you for watching. Go to uh, Frico. Oh, I forgot to do a little promo at the end here. Yeah, we'll do that. Get Frico's Daily Freaks. Just enter your email and click subscribe. Go to Frico.com. You see stuff like this. You click subscribe or just say to yourself submit instead of subscribe. That way psychologically you're submitting to my authority. And, and I can still pretend that I'm you know, consensual in nature, but I'll still build an army of, of drones that'll follow me every command. And I'm letting you know in advance. Okay? All right, great. Also go to Frico.com slash daily. Sometimes you just gotta walk away, kids. Sometimes you just gotta walk away. And that's what I did. I just walked away. Whew! Get ready for our talk feature, ladies and gentlemen. Are you guys ready for the talk feature? Because I'm going to take a little bit of a coffee ingestion. By the way, just so everyone knows, and I think you should know, if you human beings understood who and what my wife is, I think that you would, you would probably be incredibly jealous of me. You really would. You would say that man is got to be the greatest, happiest heterosexual male on the planet. Because I can't speak for what is ideal as far as relationships for 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 folks outside of the heterosexual parameter. Because I'm a heterosexual in a heterosexual relationship. But in that parameter, probably the happiest heterosexual male on the, on the planet, if, if you really understood. The, the, the glory and the awesomeness that is my wife. I, I tell you the truth, she is absolutely the greatest human being on the face of the planet. I kid you not. Objectively, within a framework of preference, but objectively. And so, that one's a doozy, but don't just just stick with the objectively part. Skip over the framework of preference. Just keep it focused to that so you understand. Greatest human being on the face of the planet, and, I, and she married me. So, <laughs> what can I say? That's one part of my life. Oh, yeah. Everything's okay. Everything's okay. All right. With that, let's get to our talk feature. See, that's the kind of stuff you only get in the live stream. When you just watch the segments, all oh, just the, the excerpt watchers aren't getting this comedy gold that's going on. All right. So we recorded. Three, two, one. This is the talk feature for Frico Talks the News on Friday, May 15th, 2020. I am Frico with Frico.com. Our feature for today is the Gopher State gets a big grid battery. Big old grid -o, Big old grid -o. There it is. There's the grid battery. See, 
can you see my you can't see my you know i'm gonna have to make sure i fix that you can't see my thing on some of these my my cursor which i want you to see but i'll make sure i gotta i got some stuff i'm working on right after i'm done posting the videos and whatnot so i got some work to do i'll be working before we get to the story, though, let's uh, let's just look at some of the ways that we got here. How do we get to be able to pick this type of story in the first place? And that's, uh, that's real simple. Some of the places we go to, this is just one of them. Obamacare.tv. Free market social engineering for the masses. You get some of these headlines like, Coronaville planning, is it time to nationalize big pharma? Stealth bailout shovels millions of dollars to oil companies. Sick of Wall Street liberals? Blame the left's methodal... Method method methodical. I couldn't see the word there because uh, you guys can't see it, but my little pointer thingy was covering it up and I couldn't see what the word was. Methodical, vigilant shareholder pressure campaign. If shareholders demand accountability, the Pentagon will listen. All of that leads us to this, this story. The Gopher State gets a big grid battery. Form Energy will be installing a massive scaled grid battery in Minnesota that could offer communities long-term power storage backup solutions, which might make power outages a thing of the past. Even in environments in which individuals and neighborhoods have a lot more local power, when I prefer with it, well, in my framework of preference, I think is, is absolutely uh, the, the objective way to go. Uh, lo have a lot more local power. Large-scale systems that serve large-scale areas will still most likely require large-scale power solutions. Batteries that have long-term stable storage create opportunities for the users of these tools to build up power in circumstances when it is effective, cost or otherwise, to do so. Imagine if you could say you're running a power plant uh, that's fueled on, say it's fueled on hydro, hydrogen uh, gas or whatever. And your period of time when the hydrogen is short or, or cheap, you're like, oh man, I'm going to run that puppy extra hard. Extra long, build up power, and then when it's really, really expensive, like you hold on, we're gonna tap into our reserves for this period. We ain't gonna be buying at that cost. Imagine that, imagine that, imagine that. Keep the keep the cost of energy low. That that might be a good or bad thing. Depends on how much it costs to get the type of energy to market that uh, you're using. If you're able to keep it so low that it's not cost effective to get it to market, that could be a problem. Batteries that have long-term stable storage create opportunities for the users of these tools to build up power in circumstances when it is... Oh, I already read that part. Don't read yourself twice. Don't read yourself twice. Don't. Now we make the transition. See, that's how you do it. And this is... Oh, so this is... Let's see. This is... You're pretty big here. So this is the remnant from yesterday. I probably added this in a different... Uh, different windows so there we go mechanical turkers mechanical turkers yeah we're not gonna have this anymore so you're done you didn't survive sorry mechanical turkers we're gone you're gone from techcrunch.com in a potential win for renewable energy form energy gets its first grid scale battery installation Form Energy, which is developing what it calls ultra-low-cost, long-duration energy storage for the grid, has signed a contract with the Minnesota-based Great River Energy to develop a 1-megawatt, 150-megawatt-hour pilot project. The second-largest electric utility in the Minnesota Great River Energy's installation in, in Cambridge, Minnesota, will be the first commercial deployment of the venture-backed battery technology developer's long-duration energy storing technology. From Energy's battery system, Form Energy's battery system is significant for its ability to deliver one megawatt of power for 150 hours, a huge leap over the lithium-ion batteries currently in use for most grid-scale storage projects. Those battery systems can last for two to four hours yeah that is significant that is a significant game changer ladies and gentlemen 
If you do the math and you're talking about two to four, let's just say four. Four. Four divided by one or 150 divided by four is. is what is that? 37.5, I think? Something like that? So 30, more than 30 times efficient as far as its ability to store power that you can build up into it. That is significant. I want these things in my life. I want a battery system. Wouldn't you like that for your home? I'd want that. I'd want to have like three of them. 300 and 450 hours. 450 hours. That is roughly speaking about 20 days, something like that. Imagine having 20 days of backup power on hand. It'll take care of pretty much most of your needs. That is a significant game changer, ladies and gentlemen. So that is why I I made this the featured story. And you can see a little thing there. You got battery storage here. Imagine, imagine the facilities that can have these. Now, I don't know how much these things cost. You're talking about a pretty massive, massive project. So I'm assuming that this is pretty cost cost prohibitive as far as my ability to store it if, if we but 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 that's just around the corner it's going to be around the corner for you to be able to build up storage and and imagine if you could uh, build up massive amounts of storage well I, I, I gotta think about it I'm, I'm thinking about some of the ways that maybe you could maximize events that produce tremendous amounts of energy, but that you wouldn't normally be able to ca capture all the, the energy. Now, if you could have the capacity to capture the energy, I'm not, I don't know, and maybe for instance, if you had waterfalls and you could more intensely, like instead of having waterfalls that you had shut off or whatever, whatever you have to do long-term, that you use the, the the river water to to build up your power. If you had, especially during, like, say, you have flood events and all that stuff roaring through. If you had the capacity when that's roaring through to actually capture that energy, and you had these massive battery stuff, so that you it didn't blow the systems. It just kept feeding, just fast feeding into all these batteries, so that during the massive events you build up this massive amount of backup energy these are some of the applications that you could be looking at at least short term but even for you for short term imagine if you had these types of batteries that could maximize again when when gas is really really cheap what would you do you got your 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 gas energy your gas generators you run your gas generator maybe you have two or three gas generators and you go out and buy two or three gas generators and you run them puppies and you just run them to keep building up power in your battery right now because it's so cheap. Like you could do that right now if you had these types of batteries. These are the things that you could do. It would be massively advantageous to individuals to be able to uh, put themselves in a circumstance in which all things being equal, again, as I say again and again in the show, it is the power to say no. So one of the pathways to being able to say no is to be able to have at, on your on demand to have in your capacity the backup power to to take care of yourself for whatever periods of time you you think you might feel secure in doing for me optimally if i could which i couldn't even come close to this right now but if i could optimally i would want to know i had six months of backup storage power i felt like i get a circumstance six months backup power I probably can survive just about anything as far as in things that might make you in your land unstable for, for, for periods of time. I feel like six months. If it's beyond six months, i got a whole different universe. But at least i got these six months, even if it's something that's fundamentally going to be beyond six months, which I'm not saying anything. I'm, I don't think anything like that's going to happen. I'm an optimist, though. You know, I think that the technology is going to favor... As people start to understand what the technology today can do, that the the chances of this becoming a, a fundamental breakdown that produces 
long scale chaos I think it's ever more remote and things like this you get this power this 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 the cost is going to come down the portability is going to come down there are massive amounts of breakthroughs where we're looking at batteries that are created with microorganisms that have been custom designed by nanobots and this isn't crazy talk this is happening go and look at our shows that my shows i'm sorry there's no r right now but there will be eventually an r uh, but go and look at my shows, and you'll see I, I talk about these things. I've literally covered these these news stories from credible news sources, from high esteemed universities and whatnots, and companies and working models. All this stuff. It's not. It's not. It's not science fiction. We're talking here. It is here, now. It is here and now, and every every week. Everything's getting cheaper and easier to replicate. That 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 Promethean fire is spreading, and those those uh, those reverse Pandora's boxes for we who strive for consensuality, opening all the time Pandora's boxes for the coercionists amongst us, which is pretty much everyone is a coercionist. So I'm not saying that in a pejorative kind of sense. Uh, I, I could I could easily be a coercionist if I was a winner. It's much more difficult to reject the easier path of coercion when you have the capacity to use it. Much, much easier. But when you don't have the capacity, what a surprise. You tend to not favor it. See how that works? See, I'm, I'm, I'm every bit the creature that I say that all of you are. I'm not exempt. Oh, and this right there, that's going to be the end. Don't forget to tip your Freco. You can go to Freco.com, find one of these big old Freco buttons, click on that. And then if you click on that, it says money selections. And if you're a millionaire, billionaire, gazillion, well, if you're, if you're a gazillionaire, I'm going to say whatever that is. So I'll let you define. You, you, you send me over a big old wad of super cash that, that, that funds me for the next 50 years, so... I'm going to do this show and nobody ever have to worry about anything. I don't even have to ask people for money any, anymore is what, I, is, is what you'd be able to do. I, I wouldn't have to promote anything anymore. I just do the news. No promotions at all. You do that for the, to, for the community. And then you can feel good about yourself for a day. Until tomorrow you find somebody else to do that for. And with that, we're going to end this segment. Okay, so yeah, that's how I'm going to try to end these right now. I didn't go to this, and I'm not sure. So I didn't go to the Frico close-ups, and I... Oh, wow. I, I got your, your your text thing here. Sorry, Mechanical Turkers. You don't fu- survive there. Nope. I'm not letting... Uh, I, I didn't switch it. You know, I really like this visual. I got to remember to go to that. I, you know what? Oh, no, I did do the Obamacare links. Okay, I got one more show link, so we are ready. We're going to do this. So so this is the last segment right before the break, everyone. So brace yourselves for the for the talk focus. Let's hope we can do this in a timely manner. Because we're, so far, we're making decent time. And we'll begin in three, two, one. This is the talk focus for Frico Talks the News on Friday, May 15th, 2020. Our top focus today... 3D printed concrete wind power in the deep blue sea. But before we go to that, here's where sometimes this story comes from. Might come from here, pioneeringnews.com. Tax Science Underground News Links. This is one of our sites, my sites, Frico, that I I aggregate daily, and today, if you went there, you would see new algorithms present predicts optimal materials among all possible compounds. U.S. Special Operations Command to develop drone-killing drones to support the Green Berets. Visa is seeking a patent for digital fiat currency, and the filling and the <coughs> filing points to a central bank use case. Those are just some of the links that you're missing on pioneering news, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I'm going to have to figure out a different way to 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 do that 
uh, when I when I'm about ready to call, consider cause consider turning the thing on because I know you're hearing that click. I wonder if I can next time I'll do here here do I'll do this I'll do yeah I think that that way is better because then I'm not I'm not discombobulating the universe is what's happening there. All right, let's get to the ah I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong place. That's what was wrong. A little bit combobulated, but I'm back on point. 3D printed concrete wind power in the deep blue sea. Concrete and wind go together like peanut butter and pickles. Unless you're pregnant and this is what it is. No questions. No judgment here. Well, shatter that disconnect between concrete and wind thanks to Purdue University, which is going to use 3D printers to print concrete wind turbines that will be used to create power out in the deep blue sea. For me, there is a poetry about the notion that concrete will be 3D printed into wind turbines, which will be affixed to offshore platforms, which will create power away from the worlds out in the deep blue sea. I actually almost considered using this as the news poem because it was. I thought I could probably get something out of that, but I didn't. Alas, I chose something different. But there. You know, just a, just a subtle kind of, I don't know why. Those, I love it when seemingly disparate elements come together in some, theoretical at least, some sort of harmonious, utilitarian, yet still aesthetically pleasing form. Here's an excerpt from aggregateresearch.com. Wind turbines could be built using 3D printed concrete, say researchers. Purdue University is researching a way to make offshore wind turbines out of 3D printed concrete. The new technique will allow the use of a less expensive material that can be floated out to site from an onshore construction plant. According to a statement out this week from the university, building traditional steel wind turbines offshore is expensive requiring parts to be shipped at least 30 miles away from the coast conventional concrete manufacturing methods also requires a mold to shape the concrete into the desired structure which adds to cost and limits design potential possibilities 3d printing would eliminate the expenses of this mold it does that it does that the researchers are working in, working in collaboration with Arkham Technologies. A startup founded, by the way, Arkham Technologies, if you want to use my voiceover for free, there, if you could do Arkham Technologies, you'll want to. It's free. You can take it. Take it. It's all yours. A startup founded to develop concrete and additive material manufacturing for onshore, onshore and offshore wind energy technology and the floating wind technology company. The floating wind techno. Oh, I like the name, but I don't like it, and I don't want to do a voiceover for you. But let me let me hold on, hold on. I'm gonna really get you here. Ready? Hold on. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. All right, ready? Ready? Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. This is for you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, all right. If you're watching Arcam Technologies, I'm doing this for you. It might take a couple of breaks. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, bear with me. I'm auditioning for a voiceover, although it's free. Although you give me credit, get free code credit, I can put it on my resume, and I can get some paying gigs, some voiceover gigs. Get me some voiceover gigs, ladies and gentlemen. Great. All right. So here, here's my, my audition for Arcam Technologies. You can use this. It's free. You don't want to use it. You're probably going to want to put it on your website. You're probably going to want all of, them, all of you employees you're wanted as your ringtone here we go ready now this might take a couple of 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 to get this right archem technologies founded to develop concrete additive ma see see i gotta get that i want to say additive materials i don't know why all right let's get this Arcam Technologies, a startup founded to develop concrete additive manufacturing for onshore and offshore wind energy technology. There you go. I only took two takes. I thought it was going to take like 15 takes, and this is going to be like a half-hour segment, and you guys are just going to have to deal with it. That. that big daddy brought it home in two takes. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. 
Well, you could have done it with... Oh, no, I could not have done it in one. I did it for two what takes for you, the people, because I knew it would be more entertaining if I screwed up the first time. Did that for you, the people. You got 24 hours to remove that hate, else you'll pay, says France to the world. Uh, this this image here, I think this is from some movie called La Haine, which means the hate. I don't know anything about it, but it's a French movie because it's, yeah. I just did a, I, I was just looking for the word, the, the French word for hate, and there's that's that's it. There you go. La Haine. La Haine! France just informed the world that all the things that are in France and are digital will be subject to constant harassment by French authorities to remove hateful hatefuls from the interwebs in case the moronic poise get nasty dumb thoughts in their heads and no longer roll over and play dead when we rub their belly with their own sick. But I'm not hating. Here's the excerpt. Wait, let's turn the music back on. There you go. I turned the music off just for 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 for, for Arkham. Arkham Technologies. We're back on it. We're back on it. French Parliament passes law requiring social media companies delete certain content within an hour. The French Parliament passes a controversial hate speech law on Wednesday that would fine social media companies if they fail to remove certain illegal content. Just the oh, did just the unctuous unctuosity of the individuals that sat around the table and wrote this crap down and look naughty heart naughty mm. heart illegal don't forget to write the word illegal that makes it immoral oh good show good show I don't know what the ew, ew, we, we. Vivi, yes, good show. Vivi, Vivi, good show. There you go. See, this is what you do when you don't want to freak out and you want to put a seven there. This is what you do. You turn it into this because this is better than if you just unload it in the, the hyperbolics with the fires and the thunders and then. Yeah! Not a freak out. Not a freak out. <sighs> These are the people that bomb children. Just remember that. All of these people bomb children knowingly. They have to, su to survive. Telling us what hate speech is. Dictating to us the moral terms of our existence. The new regulation calls for detect platforms to remove hateful comments based on race, religion, sexual orientation, gender, disability, as well. Sexual harassment! Within 24 hours after they are flagged by users, you mean Gestapo-like turncoats. That's what you are, you people that do this. You're Gestapo-like. I'm not saying you're Nazis. You're Gestapo-like, though. Gestapo-like turncoats. Because most of the human beings that do this are we, the poors. We do this to ourselves. We are the primary reason why they control us. Because we do this to us. You people, you idiots falling for this hit speech, speech moronicism. Why do you think billionaires support your initiatives? Idiots. I don't mean in your entirety of your lives. I just mean the way that you're thinking and, 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 and what you hope will deliver you from sin. No, to deliver you from evil. Deliver us from evil. And murder those who forgive us <clears throat> oh wait did I say that wrong no no I didn't that's that's kind of the ideology that they're putting forth so that's why everybody's like oh hold on we're wait a second um we didn't we, we didn't want to be murdered we were like yeah we don't like racism but we don't want to be murdered and then like even the people that you think you're protecting they're looking around and they're like yo what what are you going to do? Wait, hold on. <clears throat> My cousin is one of those people. I'm talking about a black person talking about a white person because his white his cousin is white. Yeah, I said this before. 
One of the reasons why racism has such a hard time really becoming... Well, the racism, the systemic racism that exists, exists because of racism was part of the social culture constructs and all that pretty much prevailing. It's not now. But these remnants still exist, like the ghettos still exist. They need to be destroyed, not the human beings, the systems that keep these human beings in these horrible conditions. So, <clears throat> we poors, we are constantly being told that we have to hate one another and mistrust one another because... We keep thinking that the vehicle of power, the vehicle of political power that we choose is really going to finally deliver us from the evils of the other side and finally create a land of plenty for people like us, whatever us we think we are. But the real we is truly we the poors. And we the poors is we the world because that's what makes America the greatest country in the world. It's not our laws. It's, it's, it's not our history. It's our reality. We are the world. Everybody lives here. And everybody is citizens here. They're part of the process. That's what makes us great. It's the hugest, the biggest advantage that we have over every other part of the world in, in, in every other part of the world. We are the world. <laughs> That's the problem. That's the biggest threat that America is to the rest of the world is we are the place that disproves Ethno-nationalism. We don't disprove nationalism, although I, I may. And when I say nationalism, there are there are varying degrees: militant, less militant, more consensual, less consensual. Never, never consensual. Just mean more consensual. Uh, but uh, we we have we we disprove the ethno-nationalism and the factions within that want to keep that reality like that reality already exists in america most of the unease that we have with one another is because of the lies that are being told to all of us <clears throat> but we have far more in common the 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 black gangbanger to use a stereotype the black the proverbial black gangbanger you have more in common with the white soccer mom then you do whatever politician you will ever vote for. You do. And that white soccer mom has more in common with you than any politician she'll ever vote for. And you guys just don't know it. And if you ever figured it out, these politicians, these thugs, these psychopaths, their day would die peacefully. Because people would just ignore them. They're like, listen, we don't need your stuff. Listen, your public schools, if your public schools provide a quality service, we'll send our kids there. But if you can continue, if you continue to use our children as lab rats for the latest centralized mad scientist plan that you want to hoist on the rest of us, then we're going to build our own schools and do things our way. Or maybe we won't have schools. Maybe some of us will, some of us will. We'll have different ways of doing things. But listen, man. If you provide good police that don't just show up to collect money from us, that actually show up to return our property when it gets stolen. I've reported property stolen at least, I believe, four times in my life. Never, ever, ever heard a word back on any of it. And that's the case for almost all of us. You solve crimes. You actually be a peace officer. We support the police. Great. Then we say, yeah, thank you for your service. Thin blue line, all that stuff. But you don't do that. If you do do that, that's such a tiny part of your job. All you do is show up to collect money for the most part. All you do is to take crap from us. Sell our houses. Take our guns. Pull us over for going 10 miles over the speed limit when nobody else is on the freaking road. That's what you do. That's all you do. Your hall monitors who have the the license to kill. That's what makes you dangerous because you have the license to kill and your hall monitors. That's what makes you so dangerous. That's what makes your work more dangerous. Because you, you live in a world in which they're telling you to go all over the place and do all kinds of things and keep keep prodding at people, keep antagonizing people over and over and over again. 
It's got to stop. You police. You're us. You are one of us, too. Even that, that black gangbanger doesn't realize he has more in common with you than he has any politician that will ever promise him deliverance from you. He's better off aligned with you. You're better off aligned with him. You have more in common with that black gangbanger. Mr. I'll just use a stereotype, the, the white racist officer. The white racist officer, the stereotypical white race op- racist officer has more in common with that black gangbanger than he does any politician he will ever vote for. Yeah. True story. True freaking story. And yet, he's a meat machine who's being machine. And so is the black gangbanger. He's a meat machine. I am a meat machine. But the cop especially. The officer is the ultimate meat machine. That's the one that has to die and has to kill. That's the one that has to take in the horrors of the end result of the laws and the regulations that these killers write. They're the ones that have to go to sleep at night and have these horrors in their head. They're the ones. So I have I have great empathy with, with cops. But at the same hand, I don't have any tolerance for the parts of their jobs that cause them, that, that call on them to basically harass their neighbors shake them down for pennies so that their 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 masters will 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 keep them keep them employed and keep their pension safe and keep their kids future college funds secured just just yo man just living and that's what we're all doing we're all just living we're all we're all cooperating with the with the gentle coercing of our lives, the gentle dis- diminishment of our lives. Anyway, I think I'll end the feature there. Yeah, I don't have a promotion at the end of this one. Next week, I'm gonna have some stuff. Wow, I never went out of the pioneering thing. <laughs> I stayed in there the whole time. And, you know, I didn't get to the... Oh, I suck. Alrighty. Well. Oh, I didn't make any transitions. I get lost in these things. And usually, yeah, Friday, by the end of, by the, end of the week, that's uh, also another thing. Yeah. Friday shows. Maybe they'll end up being longer in general. Because by the end of the week, my brain is... Got a lot of stuff in my head. By the end of the week, that's why I take my breaks because I gotta de- I gotta I gotta walk away and I gotta get the stuff out of my head because it's just brain spirals. You guys understand? I know, especially in Coronavilles. I know a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. You gotta go through periods of time. No, no, no. I gotta wait. I gotta walk away from all that data. Data good, but excessive data make you make you feel bad. All righty then. Well, let's, uh, listen, we are halfway, we are more than halfway through the last show of the week, and I'm about ready to be able to put a seven up there where it says a six. I came very close. I want to assure you I came very close when I was talking about the uh, the French hate speech crap. That's just, it's one of the most dangerous parts of, of, in America, even, and really anywhere where this authoritarian version of SJW has taken root, one of the most dangerous elements is this whole nature of, like, the idea of labeling certain types of speech, quote-unquote, hate speech, in and of itself is not necessarily a bad, it's a tool. It's a tool, it's a, it's a tool, it gives you a label, it gives you a... Uh, uh, a pre some somewhat of a degree a starting point a pre pre packaged contextualization so that you can listen to speech in a way that you might not have you might have not have thought about the parameters of how this speech could detrimentally affect others around them and the type of folks like that in and of itself is not bad it's not it's not a bad thing at all to understand the the potential consequences of the words that you speak and that's where hate speech starts that's where it began i from what i understood as i saw it emerge but when you add on a layer of 
more and more certaintarian claiming on what defines hate speech, what is hate speech, uh, then you're going into where you're, you're the priestly class kind of place where it's no longer a useful tool that helps under pe- helps people in a consensual manner understand in a disciplined way how to maneuver their own lives. Rather, it takes it out of that and turns it into a religious obligation. <laughs> and that's the problem. Now, that religious obligation in and of itself to me is, is it cuts you off from pursuing a, let's just say a more sobering intake of what, what reality might potentially be. But in addition to that, it uh, it puts you in a position to where you, you have to die on more and more hills. And truth is, is, is the least of your concerns because if truth contradicts your existential clinging, you have to bury the truth. So then what happens next if you put, are put in positions where you have the guns, then you end up with France. So that's, that's the iteration. Now you end up with something that started off as a way to kind of democratize power in a sense has turned into a vehicle of power for the most psychotic amongst us using highly emotional appeals to moralistic certaintarianism to convince the poors to destroy the poors in the name of 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 the good of the whole the oldest and repeated most repeated trick of of psychopaths through the ages throughout all of human history just so boring to watch this happen again but in addition to being boring it's also pretty freaking scary because i'm not reading it in a book i'm literally in the midst of watching it happen in my own country again and you think you're innovators you think you're woke you're not you're you're sleepwalking through the repeated patterns of history that are repeated and not exactly, not mathematically, proportionally, exactly, and predictably, but more more or less in a, in a general flow, pretty predictable. All centered around the fact that you keep clinging to systems that reward psychopaths, that whoever is willing to kill the most is the one that ends up in positions to be able to do so. That's what you get. doesn't matter whether you call it SJW or Christian, Muslim or, or scientism, whatever name you want to call it. As soon as you, you cling to a moral certaintarianism, then you must cut yourself off from truth because no moral certaintarianism can stand the test of reality unless it hides reality from its acolytes. All right, with that, I'll go on break. See you in a few.
It. I was actually right there. Well, I missed it. I missed it. I didn't miss the timing. I missed the button pressy thingy. I missed the button pressy thingy. So it started to repeat itself. And I can't end the loopage because just in case there's an accident where I'm, you know, during the break I do the whole any outy thing with the water issue. And uh, sometimes if there's some stuttering on the way back downstairs there could be a reason that the loop could preserve me so the loop must stay in place the loop cannot end therefore i must hit that button so that it doesn't loop or you hear the loop and then i feel bad because I, I just can't stand that but i'm i'm not ocd or anything wait did you just make light of ocd do you know i know I'm sorry. I'm sorry for making fun of deficiencies. No, I'm not. I'm not sorry. All right. <clears throat> Back to the show. With that in mind. I, you know what? With that in mind, you know what? It's perfect. This is a perfect. This is a perfect segue. Back into the show after I made fun of OCD. Wait, hold on. I got to say that three times. Made fun of. Made fun of. Okay, good. We're good now. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Warning. The material you're about to be exposed to is for the mind's vision. It is for the limited capacity to understand the actual reality of power around them, just as you and everyone else in life learn young. What you're about to hear are opinions, suppositions, like gospel, or scientific proofs, not infallible certainties. Brace yourself for incoming opinions that could confirm or deny your preferential view of the reality of power. Brace yourself for fallible material, fallible opinions, and values reflected, but nonetheless variably firmly held. We do not apologize to anyone in our We do not apologize for daring to express our views and questions of what we believe is and what we hope to see. We will keep talking so long as we are able. And now. Frigo attempts to talk about the news without freaking out. 
That is the plan, ladies and gentlemen. I pledge to you that I will do my best <clears throat> to turn that six shows since Frico last freaked out to seven shows by the end of the show. I got two more segments, and I don't have a Frico Ponders in between. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Not today. So, <clears throat> this first story is going to be our news poem. Let's see. Let's see the news poem here. Turco, mar turtle marine diversion. No, I don't have any real dangers of a freak out in that. Could could come, who knows, but pro not likely. And then we all need the human touch and so will our future battles. No, nope, no, nope, I think I have a good chance. Later. I feel good. I don't want to be, I want to be a cocky mo. I want to be no cocky mo, but I'm feeling like, man, I got this. I got this. I feel like I'm coming around the corner here. It's like I, I got through some of the heavy stuff, <coughs> heavy stuff. Got through it. So I feel like I feel like I got this. So let's get to how about we get to our news poem? Start recording in three, two, one. This is the news poem for Frico Talks the News for Friday, May fifteenth, twenty twenty. Our news poem today is titled Turtle Marine Diversion The Beach Egg Game <clears throat> How did we get here? We get stories from Newsalight.com The Glitz, The Odd, The Under the Radar, The Hard to Believe News at a Glance Obamacare.tv, free market social engineering for the masses. And finally, pioneeringnews.com, tech, science, underground news links. We send all of these things over. I do that. I am we. I am Frico. To Frico.com, where I select what is the most important news link for me for the day that I am going to convert to something beyond a link. And that is this link that I select every day for Frico Talks the News, the news poem link. Turtle Marine Diversion, the beach egg game. This is an excerpt from fizz.org. News first, poem follows. You know, magnetic framboids, where are we at on this? Are we going to continue that? Magnetite framboids. We are. We're going to keep magnetite framboids up for now. But we're going to move you down to the corner here. There we go. Yeah. <coughs> move you just a little bit off the screen there. I think we're going to keep you for now on, though. I mean, not no, no, just for now. So far, magnetite framboids is, 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 is answering the bell. It fits somehow. Research undercovers evidence that marine turtles use diversionary tactics to protect their eggs. When female sea turtles cover their nest chambers in which they have laid their eggs, they spend considerable time and effort on scattering sand around the next site. Yet, extending their time on the beach in this way exposes them to risks such as predation and exhaustion. It has been presumed that this activity was a means of camouflaging the nest site from egg predators, but its probable true function has not been identified until now. <clears throat> why why'd you, why'd you read it like that? I don't know. It just seemed... This is a good thing. Why are you goo-dooming and... Are you kidding me? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... Could you do it again? Listen, dude, they don't want to hear me do, do it again. All right. It has been presumed that this activity was a means of camouflaging the nest site from egg predators, but its probable true function has not been identified until now. Excellent. Wait. <coughs> that, was, that was rude. The paper deals with how two endangered species of sea turtle, leatherbacks, and hawksbills invest a considerable amount of time and energy to protect their eggs before the females leave to return the sea. 
They do this after they have completed nesting and expose themselves to danger and exhaustion to complete the process. So then there's this guy, Professor Malcolm Kennedy, and he's with uh, Natural History at University of Glasgow. My interpretation? <coughs> Listen, Professor Malcolm Kennedy, you do not even get written up on the board, okay? But you do get this. Ready? Our research sheds new light on the behavior of nesting marine turtles. We closely followed the activity and, and movements of hawksbill and leatherback turtles during the final sand scattering phase of nesting. Now, our findings strongly support the idea that they created a series of decoy nests away from the nest itself to reduce discovery of their eggs by predators. And this, this may explain why, despite all the extra risks, female turtles stay on the beach away from the safety of the sea, working to enhance the safety of their eggs. And they could spend longer doing this than for any other part of the elaborate nesting process. It's remarkable. Remarkably. Remarkably. We found similar behaviors in two species of turtles that shared a common ancestor. Over 100 million years ago. <clears throat> <laughs> While dinosaurs still ruled the land. <clears throat> now, what they do must be extremely important to their offspring, which they will leave behind as eggs in the sand and never see. <clears throat> I'm sorry, that was excellent. He really sold that to me. Through me, but to me. At the same time, it was a... Was a, he doesn't even know me, but we had kind of a relationship there, didn't we? Didn't we, Malcolm? And Malcolm, if you ever want to come on the show and talk to me about this, if you ever see this, if anybody knows Professor Malcolm Kennedy for the professor of natural history in the University of Glasgow, if he ever wants to come on the show and relate to him, to me, <clears throat> his emotional reaction to my interpretation of of his presentation, I would I would invite you to come on the show and and make your case, Professor. But it's a beautiful thing. And also, let me know what you think of the poem. You're not in the poem, though. Sorry. You're just not. Sometimes you get in, sometimes you don't. He didn't get in this time. Here's the poem. Turtle Marine Diversion. The Beach Egg Game. Covering the eggs, leave them out in the open, lightly covered. Just beyond the usual tracks. This may explain why, despite all the extra risks, I put my own spin on the eggs out there, perimetered from the foe, and divert. The nest where the mothers patrol the dark snaps, covering them. Effort on scattering sand, managing to toil in the sea, breaks between the roll of fangs that littered the way until cracks. And thus, to the race, working to overcome the sudden life. Despite all the extra risks, female turtles stay on the beach away from the safety of the sea. And that is the news poem for the day. <coughs> you go to uh, frigo.com and you can subscribe to make sure that you don't miss any kind of linkages and whatnot. So go to frigo.com and hit the sub button right there. Get Frico's Daily Freaks to send her your email and click subscribe. Submit. 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 Yeah. 
Hey, look, I've got a Thunberg's dad. This is what I imagine. I I don't look anything like her actual dad, but I could take Greta Thunberg, Thunderberg, Thunder, Thunder Vision? That Greta Thunder Vision. Greta Thunder Vision's face and make it her dad, what her dad would look like. How dare you! I suffered through 15 years of mash episodes. I don't... Why am I here? What is this room? I am... Hmm. Does somebody have glue in their pocket? I feel like somebody has glue in their pocket. I'm not saying I'd like to huff it, but I really would like to see it for a while. Alone in the bathroom. I'm just saying, I'm just kidding. I'm not saying her dad huffs glue. Nobody huffs glue. That's a, that's a lie. That's a damnable lie. I don't know why. You get that at the end. <laughs> Uh, no place in the news poem, but there you go. Fight me! No, don't. I don't want to fight anyone. I want love and peace and harmony. We can get through this together, kids. And on the other side, Greta, I'll be your neighbor. I want, I want you to have a good life, too. I love you, too, Greta. I do. <laughs> I love this one. Oh, some of the images that I, for the, for the show image, these are collages. I create these from different stuff and put them together and weird and do things. So the, the, I only do this just, I, if I could, if I had the luxury, I would do it for all of the images for the main, the five main stories. But I don't, so I only do it for this one. I love to, sometimes, I love it when it all comes together in the backgrounds and, like, for this particular scene, I love this. Subjectively, the framework of preference, though, I would have to say objectively. And I like to add that, make that note. <coughs> all right, let's, uh, let's record this. Uh, this is the dialectical. This is the last segment of the day. Oh, man, we're, we're making okay time. Let's, let's see if we can get this done. Let's see if we can do a 10, 15 minute version of this. <coughs> I did that for the fans. I got a couple uh, emails from folk that say, could you please clear your throat more during the show without turning off? Oh, you know what? Oh, I hear, here you go. Here, you ready? Gummy. I got that. I got it all down. It, it took a little bit, but I got it all down, honestly. Uh, you, you do what you got to do for, for you, the people. I drink my own phlegm for you as a paper. Oh, that might be a bit hyperbolic, but maybe not. Maybe not. I would do that for you, the people, because I love you. You know that. All right. Let's get the dialect recorded in three, two, one. This is the Dialectical for Frico Talks the News on Friday, May 15th, 2020. Our Dialectical today is... We all need the human touch. And so will our future battles. That's a... Who is that? Is that Rick Springfield? We all need the human touch. We all need... Whatever the rest of it is. I think it was vital that I shared that with you. You know it. It is. But part of the show. This is not a news show. This is a news art show. That's why you get this. If you are imagining battles without humans, this little bit to follow might dispense you of such assumptions. I don't think I wrote that right. I have to think about that. I still, I still can't get it right in my head. How is, how should I write that? It's an excerpt from a lengthy article that offers the theory that warfare will continue to need a human element, and that technology might not be the be-all, end-all to decide the winners and looters, losers, looters. <laughs> That's actually <laughs> the winners are always the looters too. But sometimes the losers get to loot too. That's another story. In future battlefields. This is an excerpt from WeOnTheRocks.com. 
the future of warfare will continue to be human. Now, come on. We all need the human touch and so will our future battles. The future of warfare will continue to be human. Dropped the mic on him on that one. Y'all know I did. War on the Rocks, if you see this and you want to come on the show, whoever wrote this, if you want that, and defend yourself from the fact that your headline just got humiliated by mine, defend yourself, you're welcome to come on the show and defend yourself. I will headline dust you. Headline dust you. I don't know if that is a thing, but... From the development of tanks and machine guns in World War I to increase in artillery range and munition lethality to the precision-guided weapons of the information age, Biddle describes increases in battlefield lethality as growing exponentially since the beginning of the industrial age. During that, Biddle is the person they're writing about. They're, they're reviewing a book, but that doesn't matter. You have to go to the article to find out all these details. I don't want to give you enough to not go to the article. You need to go to the article. During that entire period, military analysts routinely concluded that their current period was on the cusp of a revolution in military affairs. An observer of exponential growth in battlefield lethality in 1950 would be just as likely to predict an imminent revolutionary transformation as one in 2000 or 2020. The curve looks identical at all scales. This suggests that exponential advances in lethality since the turn of the previous century are more evolutionary than revolutionary in any given period of time. That's very key. That's very terrible. So basically, this is gradual, iterative, precept upon precept. This is sudden jolt in the shift of the reality. This leads to Biddle's second and perhaps most surprising find, I don't know why am I reading like this. Why am I reading like this? If we're on the rocks, you can complain about that. Come on the show. Whoever you guys are, whoever you are. Because I, I like your stuff in general. Our last, our, over the last century, Tech Overmatch has been able to, uh, about as predictive of victory as a coin toss. Biddle's multi-mode analysis has shown that of 16 wars between 1956 and 1992, for which data was available, the technologically superior side won eight times. I would really have to look into a lot of things to try to figure out a lot of the things that are claimed and things, and I don't have that. I looked briefly to see if there was a list and I couldn't find it readily and quickly enough as far as what, what wars he was citing and I couldn't find the list. So if I had the time, I would have dug deeper. This is one of those stories I could end up seeing. I'm not sure if this would be one of them. You'd end up sometimes you'll see one of the shows that we talk about here, the Tuesday through Friday parts. You could see on the Monday show, but it would be, I'd go into a lot more detail. So this would be one instance where I'd probably try to dig deeper and figure out more stuff because this is definitely one of these things that i'm <laughs> this is there there this is the ch this, one of the reasons i'm showing this, this is a fundamental challenge to an assumption of mind so uh, it's uh, it's important for me to make note of this and try to figure out if there's any validity to what it has but anyway let's continue believe you me i'm not done talking about this topic in future editions not necessarily this particular iteration of this topic but I'm sure there will be other opportunities for me to talk in more detail. So I won't get I won't get all flabber blobbed in the details and and ruin the show like my predecessor did. No, not this one. Not on my watch. In his 2006 book, Military Power, Explaining Victory and Defeat in Modern Battle, Biddle argues that the massive increases in lethality associated with the machine guns, air power tanks, and other 20th century technological advances did indeed change the way modern militaries fight. However, the change is primarily due to tactics developed on the battlefield to minimize exposure of friendly forces to those advances in weapons systems. Simply put, when advances in artillery and air power rendered massed forces virtually suicidal, okay, warfare didn't simply become an exchange of vaporizing massed forces. Instead, commanders dispersed their forces in innovative tactics that enabled the accomplishment of military objectives while minimizing exposure to increasingly lethal weapons. Though the battlefield learning curve, there's so many things that I want to say, but I'm not, uh, I'm, again, I'm going to have opportunities to speak about a lot of these things in the future. So. Though the battlefield learning curve is steep and costly, those who innovative innovate 
tactically go on to victory as often as those who possess the most advanced battlefield technology. Now this is one of the reasons why I would like to see this 1956 to 1992. If you have one force which is technologically superior but its technological superiority isn't Never mind. Stop it. Stop it. See, I almost did it. I almost did it. I caught myself. Never mind. Harnessing virtual wartime selection pressures. Technology does help win wars, and AI has important military potential. However, if technolo technological advances in lethality are overcome by tactical innovation as often as not, <clears throat> then tech overmatch is a nice-to-have not a need to have. Okay. To avoid the worst of the harsh wartime selection pressures that are waiting for the unprepared, innovation in the use of force should be prioritized at least as highly as innovation in weapon system. At least as... Now this, by the way, I do agree with this. Uh, it, this, this is definitely... I don't agree with the, the, uh, the overall assessment, however that the future of warfare will continue to be human. That part is where I'm still waiting for a justification for this assumption. So far, what they've given me is that technical advance doesn't favor... Well, anyway, never mind, never mind. To do this, the two things are needed. First, greater investment in virtual training capability and capacity. And second, reducing operations tempos to enable greater focus on readiness for the future fight. I, I agree with these assessments, by the way, as far as the American military is concerned. The American military needs to take itself out of play in a lot of places so it can concentrate on, on, on training and, and recalibrating and <coughs> facing a new reality. And it's you just can't make it all about technology. So, I, you know, I think that as I'm reading this, I'm understanding. I don't think it, maybe I understood it as much when I first read it. As I think that what they're really saying fundamentally here is not that human beings won't still be needed in the battlefield, but that human beings, the, the investment in the human must continue on pace with the investment in tech. I think that's the fundamental takeaway. And I believe that even that will become less and less true. Even So even at that level, if I was to accept that that is their overall premise, I will kind of suggest that that might not necessarily be as much the case as, as, as thought. However, I will say that it is still the case, very much so, and will be, continue to be for the foreseeable future. But it, it might change after we get over a, a couple of key hurdles. The, the, the most essential one being the democratization of, 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 of intelligence, if you will. The democratization of intelligence, which will come when every nation, every person, every association has the capacity to have at their fingertips or around their wrist, as I envision. The, all of the wisdom of the entire universe, so to speak, and, and cannot be outmatched by the other. It's kind of mutual assured, oh, okay, you can't fool me. <laughs> Whole other world. Whole other world. And that might be, well, we might be closer to that sooner than we realize. So the theory presented here seems to leave out the element of the capacity of remote elements to fulfill the role of boots on the ground. In addition to giving levels of intelligence against the non-technical or low technical competitor that alter, alters the power of technical advantage in ways that no previous levels of tech could hope to achieve up until this point. But the theory is not completely wrong, at least in its conclusion, that the human will still need to be part of the future battlefield. The reason humans will still be needed in the future battlefield is not so much that tech cannot hold boots on the ground or completely, efficiently eliminate the physical competitor, but that the tech imbalance between nation-states, parastates, and isolated independence is shrinking every day. The cost of development, the speed of testing, the cost of production 
of high-level remote devices capable of deterring with ease physical invasion wave upon 3D printed wave of high wire drone horde displays that or or high wire drone displays that raise the cost of coercion significantly the invader especially if the invader is invading more than one point of entry if you're invading a tiny tiny space and just that alone you could probably overcome but if you're not if you're invading a larger space and you have to have mo yeah good luck Until the invader can, with minimal cost, inject the physical presence into the desired space, the invader cannot hold the land, though. If the competitor of the invader had no tech, well, then tech can take hold and hold the land alone. In essence, what I'm saying here is, if I'm right, if we're going to see the democratization of tech across the board, and the difference in technical advances between anyone is really not, not that significant, then that means you must actually have the will of the people to hold the land. Simply put, you won't be able to because the tech has, has enabled the defender to raise the cost of coercion significantly and, and even raise significantly the cost of, of seeking to sustain stability if, if you've ticked off enough people in your land. So that's what I believe. That's where I believe that we are heading, If if especially if we... Well, if I'm right, and also if, if we, the consensual, are successful in doing what we can to, to help uh, to guide us towards the democratization of thought in general, to free tech, to assure that tech doesn't get locked behind secret doors that create artificial scarcity, that uh, enable them to create highly stripped-down versions of the awesome powers that they exclude for themselves. That's the key. The key is to keep it democratized, or you'll end up with one of those instead. Of, as you'll end up with a dystopian outcome rather than, well, I'm not offering a utopian outcome. There are no such things, but I am offering outcomes. Uh, 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 alt, uh, I am offering an, an outcome that for the vast, vast majority of humans will afford us opportunities to more closely live from, from, from birth to grave the lives of our own choosing and not be limited by the circumstances which we have little control over. And this is not to suggest that uh, we still won't have the overall majority of our lives are still going to be dictated by circumstances beyond our control. However, we have the capacity to significantly reduce them in ways that would still, for the human, in the scale of what we can experience, in, in the individual and aggregate levels I think will be significantly profound and we will see new types of human exchange that we and, and human creation and we have no idea what's ahead of us but it's, it's, it's going to be a renaissance that will put the renaissance to shame it will be incredible the, the, the flowering and the burst of 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 diverse wonder and all diverse wonder and all. no singular nation no singular people no singular person just the whole bunch of feckin' flow local flowerings and some national and local expressions but i mean national and uh, levels between maybe some world expressions but overwhelmingly we're talking local flowers localities that are able to produce great works of art localities where populations of 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 three million can now produce high quality movies art whatever because of our technological capacities today that 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 are as good as as what it used to take populations of 300 million we can do it for significantly less with significantly less resources we get significantly more more people opportunities to live off of the creativity of their minds because it's not just going to be three or four Hollywood celebrities that take all of those entertainment dollars such as whatever we end up calling these things these different currencies will have most of it will be local 
and some of it will be at levels between national and local, and some of it will be world, but most of those entertainment dollars will be funding the lives of small-scale human beings doing awesome things that particular niche markets love. Like, that's what's coming if we can democratize tech, democratize thought. And I'll leave you at that. I'll see you guys on Monday if you... Uh, can't want to catch us on the live stream Monday through Friday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the YouTube Action Bots channel. We'll see you then. All right. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. That's the end of the show. Well, I got through this show in a decent period of time. I'm very happy about that. And means that uh, yeah it means a lot it means a lot man it means a lot and I think I'm just going to end it there I want to thank everybody for, for joining us here today I am going to return Monday 12.30pm Eastern Standard Time I got this uh, I got to make a change here though y'all know what I have to do right y'all know what I got to do y'all don't even, don't even act like you don't know ready drum roll please there it is there it is Seven shows, ladies and gentlemen. I made it. Seven shows. Now look back here. I'm not sure. Like, where, where was the most difficult part? Let me go through here real quick. Let's see. We got the uh, paying those you paid to watch horror. That was not... I was okay. I, I well, it was a terrible story, but... The one-man corpo band. Oh, that one. That one. That was agitating. I was getting close to some stuff with that one. Hugh, Hugh Miles scuttles into the evolutionary What the Freak Jungle. Now, I love that story. That was awesome. That was good news. Good news. I love the 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 big grid battery story. That that was a wonderful story. Really appreciated that. 3D printed concrete. No problem with the 3D printed wind concrete. 24 There it is. Ironically enough, the one that the the the, the one that is a, supposed to be a gesture to, to end hate is the one that is going to produce way, way more hate than it allegedly is protecting the pores from, from being exposed to the poor pores, the poor pores. That was the one that, you know what, if I just, if I even just lingering there for a second, it was still there. The turtle story was awesome. And the poem was probably the best poem that you've ever heard. If that's the only poem you've heard by me. Oh, you like that? I love bravado. We all need the human touch. It's the future battles thing. But that was not annoying. I actually thought that was very interesting and a challenging assumption to you know, some of my assumptions. So, uh, well, I'm going to cover that in more detail. And that's it. That's how we're going to end this. I thank everybody for joining us here today. And uh, for those of you that uh, stayed with me, even even when I said stuff that you thought, what the, what the plobbles? Why is this man literally trying to murder me? And then you realize that you were just being emotional and you stayed with it. I tip my fedora to you. I'm a fedora tipper. That's what I do. I, I tip fedoras around here. And for those of you that maybe had a hard time, you know, you weren't ready to, to, to forgive and forget. I leave this I leave this for you and, and for me, too. We can, we can all love one another. We can all make bread together with pores. We can. There are ways that we can do this. Multiplicities of ways as well. None of us need to sign up to the particular moral con absolutarian constructs of the other. You can have them. We, we just don't need to force them on one another. Join me. Join me in consensuality. Thank you for engaging with this material presented. As usual, remember your views, your suppositions do not make you subhuman, nor do they permit you to subhumanize others. No humans were harmed in the making of the show, and we extend no wish of harm on anyone who hasn't directly harmed or threatened to harm others, first, no matter how reprehensible we find your views. We will see you in the next Frico Talks, where Frico attempts to talk about the news without freaking out. <laughs>
Okay. 